Uh, welcome to a new video. I want to talk about Xperia 10 Mark II against 10 Mark III, but not running the default software Android, but Sailfish OS. We will take a look at the hardware differences and we will take a look at the software difference in terms of speed and performance. So let's get started. So here we have the devices. Here's the Xperia 10 Mark II and this is the Xperia 10 Mark III. And uh, yeah, we will take a look at them first of all in terms of size. You can see almost the same size. In fact, the cover that I have here for the 10 Mark II is fitting nicely on the 10 Mark III as you can see here. It's a little bit of more space for the camera cut out here as well but uh, the rest is pretty much the same so both have a fingerprint reader here on uh, the side as you can see and uh, the volume rocker is there as well so this is basically the same on the same position even both have a headphone jack on the same position and a microphone hole there USB Type-C, both USB Type-C 2.0 only, OTG support that should work with Safe as well. And the flap for opening up the SIM tray is a bit different as you can see here. It's a bit down, a bit lower on the 10 Mark II than on the 10 Mark III. In general, everything else is the same. Let's try out the unlocking with the fingerprint reader. So one, two, three. And you can see almost the same time. And yeah, I unlocked here and of course I turned it off there. Let's do it again. One, two, three. Yeah, I think a bit quicker on the 10 Mark III, but there's not much of a difference uh, in regards to this. Let's take a look at some of the software and some of the speed comparisons that you're all waiting for. So opening up the browser, for example, let's hope they're both in portrait mode one two three and we will see yes the Xperia 10 Mark III on the right side is quite a bit quicker not only in opening up the browser but also in Wi-Fi and you will notice also when I just go out here that the Wi-Fi signal on both they are connected to the same Wi-Fi in this case it looks the same right now but usually you have a bit of lower on the 10 Mark II than on the 10 Mark III then you might notice it or not the brightness of the 10 mark free display is much brighter even though i have lower here in adaptive brightness than on the 10 mark II. so we have a brighter display on the 10 mark free as well you'll notice this uh, with, with the whites on the website for example some other tests calculator and you see again quicker on the 10 mark Free. You see also some stuttering sometimes on the 10 Mark II. I already configured the 10 Mark II to use non-transparency, which is a custom patch created by me to yeah get rid of the big lags and big stutters when uh, scrolling around here, which uh, you notice that this has transparency, this one has no transparency. So still the 10 Mark III offers a far superior performance, no dips in frame rate, constant 60 frames per second, where here sometimes it drips down to 58, 57, 55. And in rare occasions, like for example, the browser, and if you do some something like this, it can stutter and go down to like 52 frames per second, which is a bit of a downer. And sometimes you notice that there's a lag, some kind of lag on the 10 Mark II. Not so on the 10 Mark III, it's running very fine. The other big difference that you will notice is that the 10 Mark II utilizes under Salesforce OS stereo sound. So it's not only using the downfiring speaker that it's using on Android, but also the earpiece here on the top to create stereo sound. Just like, for example, let's play a video of me. You'll hear the stereo sound. Welcome to a new video where I want to compare the speed of the Huawei P Smart 2021 and the Nova. So you hear it's very loud and there is a stereo effect because it is coming from the earpiece and the bottom firing speaker. We don't have the same 
kind of feature on the 10 Mark free, sadly, for now at least. What you can do, let me go into YouTube app and to demonstrate you how, uh, what can we play this maybe, how loud it can get. So what I noticed here immediately is it's very, very harsh in terms of highs. So this one has, I think, the better speakers because more balanced with this one here using the earpiece as well, where you have a bit of more bass and here it's lots and lots of highs and his sounds that I really, really don't like here. And uh, yeah, in terms of otherwise performance, in terms of uh, um, uh, Android applications, for example, let's go and open up some stores like the F-Droid 1, 2, 3. You will notice it's loading immediately here and it's like a little bit of a delay there. This has something to do with the Xperia 10 Mark II, not keeping all the Android applications always in memory, where both have uh, six gigabytes of memory, so there should be no issue there at all. But yeah, they are behaving a little bit different when it comes to this. When it comes to the network or something like this, like mobile network or something like this, no issues at all. But there's a big, big difference in terms of location services. So let's go in here. Location services, I have custom settings here because I'm using the custom settings. Even if I have device only mode, like here, uh, there's a big difference when it comes to getting the map app here running, one, two, three, and getting the location. This one immediately has my location here in Cologne, and this one, yeah, it has Cologne, but it doesn't have my location at all. So for some reason, the Xperia 10 Mark III is way better in terms of location services than the 10 Mark II. For me, I have to go into the custom settings using the custom map data and GPS data from Selfish, uh, from Yola for Selfish S to get any location da data at all. Otherwise, yeah, this is basically what I get here from this uh, location data. When it comes to camera, there's a big advantage on the 10 Mark II because the 10 Mark II supports all the three lenses on the back here that you can see with the three buttons here. So I can, for some reason it's showing me a black screen, but I can switch usually between those uh, different uh, modes here and different lenses. And uh, yeah, I'm not sure why it's showing me a black screen now. Let's start it again. Maybe I have to reboot it. Anyway, it has the ability to switch between all the free lenses where the 10 Mark III only has the ability to switch to the front-facing camera and no other. And the same goes for like filters. Here I have the option to enable filters and uh, all those filters are non-functional on the 10 Mark III right now, which is a bit of a downer. HDR camera is not supported. There's no HDR option here at all. You have to go into advanced camera to support HDR, to have HDR support. But this is also not working on the 10 Mark III. So there's still something that needs to be addressed on the 10 Mark III. And here in advanced camera, yeah, he can show you, can switch between the three different lenses, ultra wide angle, white, and tele lens, which is uh, working fine, which is not working on the Xperia 10 Mark III at all. And even if I have advanced camera installed, let's close the camera up here. E even if I have it installed and uh, I start it, you can see it just doesn't expose the free camera. So I don't have the support for this. I can only use this one camera and do some nice shots. And we will do some comparison between those two in terms of uh, photos as well. So let's take a look at the comparisons of photos and videos. So this is now the front-facing camera of the Xperia 10 Mark III running Selfish OS uh, external microphone attached. And no, I don't have any stabilization here. I just have a small two-axis gimbal here to assist me a little bit when it comes to the performance here on the front-facing camera. I think it's looking nice so far, but it's only 1080p 30 frames per second. And if I just turn around a little bit, you will see that, yeah, I think the exposure is not the best. Some HDR may be a little bit better than 
uh, what was on the 10 Mark II. But in general, yeah, this is what you can expect in terms of the front-facing video. This is now the front-facing camera of the Xperia 10 Mark II and uh, 8 megapixels 1080p 30 frames per second uh, gimbal i have here to access gimbal where it is clamped onto to uh, get me here somehow on the camera how's the dynamic range i'm not sure it has the best dynamic range here and uh, yeah mm, i'm using the external microphone which might help a little bit but when it comes to blue skies do you see anything there uh, yeah, I think it has some limitation here of the front-facing camera. The front-facing camera is not the one that I would want to use for vlogging. So this is now the ultra-wide angle on the Xperia 10 Mark II on the back, which is super super ultra wide, which is cool. It doesn't have the best high dynamic range, it doesn't have any autofocus at all, but you get like at least ultra wide angle, which might be very handy for certain vlogging situations where you want to show something. With the sun in the background, probably the exposure is not the best, but if I go here and just turn around a little bit, you will see there is a bit of blue sky, so it has some bit of dynamic range, a bit of limited dynamic range, not high dynamic range, maybe a little bit of an extended dynamic range, I would call it, but not really high. And uh, I cannot switch during recording to the main lens, but I can stop the recording right now and then switch to the main lens. And now it's utilizing the main lens for recording here right now. You see the blue sky probably, hopefully, in the background as well. If I turn around here again, it's hopefully still exposing on my face and focusing is also working on me or not, hopefully. And uh, yeah, this is the main lens. Even though I'm using a gimbal, there is some induced shake still going on. It's a two-axis gimbal, so maybe there is a little bit of shake that you can see still on this uh, video footage. Otherwise, do you see some background blur? Is it nice? Is it something usable for vlogging? At least the audio seems to be usable for vlogging. If the device itself otherwise is usable for vlogging, yeah, write it down in the comment section. Let's compare it with the 10 Mark III, which only can utilize the main lens on the back. So hopefully recording now on the 10 Mark III using the main camera lens here. And yeah, I went back a little bit to show you the transition between shadow and now the light, sunlight in the background. Do we have any lens flare here? Yeah, how does it look like in terms of cameras? In 1080p 30, of course, microphone attached, gimbal also to access gimbal there what do you think about the quality here of this video how is it looking what i can do with this gimbal i have an extended mode here where i can just simply extend it out a little bit and now i can compensate a little bit for not having the ultra wide angle accessible for this phone on Selfish OS, which is a bit of sad, but what can you do? You have the possibility to do such thing and get a better lens then. And of course, let's check out, let's go a bit back again. Let's check out the uh, dynamic range. If I go back here, my, the sun is now exposing my face and behind me probably you will see some blue skies as well, which looks nice. How's background blur here? I think there's not much in terms of background blur. And what we will do right now is compare the photos. I can only compare the main camera lens photo here against the Xperia 10 Mark II, but let's check it out and see how the photos differ. On paper, they have the same camera sensor, so there should be not much of a difference. Here we have the photos. On the left, always the 10 Mark II, and on the right, always the 10 Mark III, both with safer shares. You can immediately see there's a different kind of automatic white balance and automatic uh, color. So we have a bit of warmer colors on the Xperia 10 Mark II and a lot cooler on the 10 Mark III. When it comes to sharpness and details, I think there's a bit of over sharpening going on in the 10 Mark II, much more than on the 10 Mark III. The 10 Mark III tends to be a little bit less sharp and tends to be a little bit more natural. You can see it here in the green grass and compared to here where a lot of sharpening is going on. The same goes here on this uh, kind of wall that you can see here in the background. And in general there, you can see it's a bit of less sharpening on the 10 Mark III, which looks more natural. And I think the dynamic range also is a bit better on the 10 Mark III. When you can see here, it's not only the white balance, there's also some overblown highlights on the 10 Mark II that the 10 Mark III doesn't have. When we come to close-up shots, the 10 Mark II does a little bit of a better job, I think, than the 10 Mark III, but it is hard for them, for both of them, to focus on small things like this 
But here you can see that especially the highlights are a bit too bright here on the 10 Mark III, where here the 10 Mark II does a little bit of better job and you get more details out of this photo. Uh, selfies is flipped around for some reason, so the 10 Mark II uh, has the more blue color, the more brighter color, but also the face is sharper, way sharper. You can see so many details on my face here that the 10 Mark III just simply smears uh, snow. And I took several shots as everything looks so blurry here where the 10 Mark II nails it basically. And when you look at the sky, it's like less, less saturated on the 10 Mark III and much more bluer. There's more high dynamic range on the 10 Mark III for sure. The 10 Mark uh, II has a little bit of less, uh, but there's a warmer color tone in general. So my face color is just way too yellow here. It's uh, maybe a little too pale, but yeah, this is what you see in terms of selfie cams. When we come to the main camera again, you can see the same thing, much more blue colors, much more punchier colors on the 10 Mark III and much more warmer color tone on the 10 Mark II. 10 Mark II is not so realistic, I have to say, because the blue in the sky, it was really the blue. It was not this kind of turqu turquoise blue that you can see here. Um, it is more kind of this blue that the 10 Mark III got. When we come to sharpness again, you can see a little bit more sharpness applied on the 10 Mark II, a bit softer on the 10 Mark III, the 10 Mark III more yeah, towards what a camera would really capture. Uh, just look at this here, for example, you can see again, like the difference uh, also in both of them in terms of colors, which is like super dramatic. When we come to another close-up shot, again, a bigger flower, but still hard to focus on both. And here the Focusing is really, really hard. I used on the 10 Mark II, I cheated a bit. I used advanced cam because I couldn't get anything sharp with the normal camera on top of the normal camera blacking out. So having complete black screen, I couldn't use it anymore. Uh, the 10 Mark III was usable with the normal camera, but you can see it did not nail the focus. If you nail the focus, you'd probably get the same as the 10 Mark II. But again, a bit more cooler uh, color on the 10 Mark III, which, uh, yeah, I prefer, I have to say, because it's more realistic. And the 10 Mark II is a bit too yellowish here in my case. Um, but what do you think about this uh, shots here? High dynamic range again, again a shot, the 10 Mark II too desaturated, too yellowish. The 10 Mark III a bit more punchy, the blues are a bit more punchy, the greens are a bit more punchy. But in general, when you take a look at the exposure level as well, it is a bit brighter on the 10 Mark III and I think the dynamic range is a bit better on the 10 Mark III as well when it comes to the little, little details here in the sky and so on. In the behind this church tower there, there's a little bit of blue stripes still visible and almost nothing there on the 10 Mark II. And yeah, the 10 Mark II doesn't look pleasant, I have to say, in, in this comparison especially. And yeah, the shadows are a bit too dark. Here it is still acceptable. Also the, the sharpness, the heavy applied sharpness on the 10 Mark II, I don't really like, I have to say. It's way better on the 10 Mark III. Yeah, this is basically everything in terms of photography. Uh, so yeah, you see this color differences, you see a bit sharper pictures on the 10 Mark II, a bit less sharp on the 10 Mark III, but more natural, but with a bit more punchy, colder colors, more realistic colors on the 10 Mark III. What do you think? So in general, what is my conclusion when it comes to both of those phones? The speedier phone is definitely the 10 Mark III. A little bit more buggy phone is definitely also the 10 Mark III. The 10 Mark II is a little bit less buggy and you have the power to use all the free camera lenses here, which is, I think, something that might be important for some people that want to use this for photography sometimes as well and want to be able to use the ultra wide angle and the telezoom as well. When it comes to audio, the 10 Mark II also has an edge because it has the stronger speaker setup where it's utilizing the front facing earpiece and speaker for a stereo sound effect with richer bass where the 10 Mark III has a very tinny sounding speaker only on the bottom. Gets pretty loud as well, but it's not the best. But the 10 Mark III has the better GPS signal than the 10 Mark II and better Wi-Fi support. Uh, where I have usually one bar more of Wi-Fi connection and speed than the 10 Mark II. That's basically everything for those two Selfish OS flagship phones, we have to say, because those are the latest and greatest officially Yola Selfish OS supported smartphones. What do you think about them? That's everything for this video. Hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for watching. Until the next time. Bye.